a sister, and I know this thing is going on here, and so a lot of these sisters are suffering, but they, it's, they're glutton for punishment. I met a sister about 12 years ago, 13 years ago. This was like eight, 1989, I remember, whatever. This sister was always complaining about she couldn't get no man. Now, she was in her mid-30s. I'm looking at this sister. This sister was fine as all get up. You know what I'm saying? Dark skinned sister, booty, titties, face, everything. She always complained about not getting no man, but see, she's 35 years old, and I'm looking at her, and I'm looking at her, and I'm going, um, I said, I'm tired of you after fucking six months, you running your goddamn mouth every five minutes about you can't get no man. I'm calling you out on this shit. I look at you, I say, you, you fine as shit. Mm-hmm. And I say, I know. When you, because she's getting a Ph.D. Mm-hmm. I said, I know when you was an undergrad and when you was in college, you in high school, when you was in there, you had niggas that was all over you. Mm-hmm. And I said, you gave them no chance because you couldn't see their potential. Mm-hmm. And I said, them niggas were the same one day right there in school with you or whatever. And I said, some of them niggas you know right now as doctors and lawyers and all the shit you're looking for. And it was all over you. And she said, I, she said, you're exactly right. And I you wouldn't give them no fucking chance. You see what I'm saying? Because they didn't have no fucking money at the particular time. Right. Or they was too fucking nice. Right. And I said, see, so now, flip side, I'm getting, this is, because we're dealing with psychology and we're dealing with case study. We have to study our people with a case study. I'm meeting sisters now because I'm 42 now. So, so the range of the sisters I'm meeting is 40 plus and in their 50s. Right. And, and, and it's a wide abundance of them. Abundance of them. In that, age, in that age range. In that age range. Right. Right. And now, the men, there's a men shortage. Some of them dick don't work. Some of them dead. Some of them still in jail. Hershey Highway. Hershey Highway. So all that is tapping away at it. And now they are very, they've gone past the, they, they're sometimes they, they've changed. Now they're admitting that they like nice men now. Right. At age 50, mm-hmm. but they didn't like the nice men. In the 20s. In the 20s. And my mama told me, she said, when you go back to school, she said, I don't be fucking around going up on, my mama, she, she, she said, I don't be fucking around going up on the campus being too goddamn nice. Because yeah. a nice nigga better get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> She's a fucking school teacher. Right. She's trying to tell me, she said, you, you know, right. she, she senses some shit. Right. So he's going around fucking around on the couch being too nice because I'm looking at this thing and I'm, and, and, I, and, I, and I'm surveying and I'm at a table and it was about 20-something girls and all of them said they had been hurt. And I said, well, my point here is all of you have been hurt by men. Then obviously, uh, nothing can happen in a vacuum. Obviously, you must be going with men that is automatically prone to hurt you because there's a certain man you gravitate towards. Right. And you know what? And if, and have you heard like a lot of women... Always keep saying they keep meeting no good niggas. Yeah. I'll be the problem with you, girl. They, not only that, it's a spiritual energy. They attract right. no good niggas. Right. No good niggas. Now, I was, it was, it was a young girl. It's a brother, he conscious. He comes, uh, introduced at the same age. He came down to visit her, real nice and stuff like that. The first thing she said, well, he's not my, not my type. What the fuck is your type? I already know what your type is because you explained what your type is. Mm. The last nigga you was into, and it's ironic that the last nigga she was into was a down low male. Mm. He was one of the motherfuckers that got to the extreme that he didn't even like women. Mm -hmm. And she was attracted to him. Mm -hmm. You see, because the down low male has no problem getting women. None. None. Because they hate women. And so therefore... The women love them. The women love them. (laughs) That's you know what I'm saying? It's strange, man. It's some strange that's, shit. That's why I say, man, it's, we have a, an extreme. Exactly. Mental, we, no, we're not meant to be ill. We are extremely meant to be ill people. We are fucking schizophrenic. They say that, uh, um, it's, it's almost mental derangement. Mentally yeah. deranged. Yeah. People who live, who function in life. You see what I'm saying? Who function in life? So now, I'm saying this as a male, not bash. I'm giving you the survey of what the elderly sisters, I don't want to say elderly, mature sisters right. are saying now. Mature, yeah. 
You know what I'm saying now? They're saying now in retrospect, um, I pass up a lot of motherfucking niggas. And let me tell you that. And I, I knew something was up. Because the spirit got me one time and I was in my fucking mid-twenties. I think I was 24 years old. Sister laying in my bed naked. She said, uh, you know Alvin Cade? I said, yeah, I know the brother. Real nice brother. She said, I went out on a date with him last night. I said, yeah, he's a pretty cool brother. She said, you know that son of a bitch? Fill my goddamn car up with gas. <laughs> now, I know Alvin. He looked. They went on a date. He looked. It's night. She got to go home. Mm -hmm. He's saying, hey, look, your car on E. Let me hook you up. Let me hook you up, because I don't want you to get caught on the highway or whatever. They still students, so don't necessarily mean that she got a whole lot of money. He had some cash on him. He's just a nice brother. He filled a goddamn car with gas. And she had a problem with that. She in the bed with me the next day naked. Not only did she have a problem with it, <laughs> she was appalled by it. <laughs> she was like, that goddamn no good nigga. Can you believe that motherfucker filled my car up with gas? And something went through me. I kicked that fucking bitch out the bed. <laughs> something went through me. <laughs> That's some funny stuff, man. It's some funny shit. <laughs> now, I did an experiment one time. And it was an experiment because my mama told me what the deal is. In my heart, because that's how humane I am now, I'm unselfish because I give my career and everything for my people. In my heart, I was one of them guys that was real nice, but was smart enough to know that I never could show it yeah, at that yeah. early age. Right, right. Because I know I that bitch would misconstrue me, right, I and I'd be like the rest of them niggas with no pussy around. Right, I can identify with it. I can identify with it. <clears throat> so I had to play a role. Because mm -hmm. my mama trained me. Don't fuck around and go up that motherfucker being nice. In, in other words, you had to be like nice nasty. Nice nasty. Mm -hmm. But I had to play a role that was outside of myself. Right. And an image that I had to put on. You see what I'm saying? To get that leg back muffin. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Leg back muffin. That's right. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Well, that's, oh, that's about the functionary. Your leg back muffin over out of the functionary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now check this out. Um... I met a sister. I got so cold with this shit. And it was a psychological thing. I never really put them through nothing. But I, you know, I was, man, I was dressed and I had on suits and stuff, man. I was, I was clean and shit, man. It was in the 80s. I had, man, double-breasted suits. I had um, leather suits. I had all this shit because cause I was taking, I was selling tapes and stuff and all that. One of my boys, we had, we had a ring on. We was mm -hmm. bartering and trading shit mm -hmm. in school and stuff. I would steal some shit from some place and sell that. And the other boy was getting some shit from his store. And we had all this shit in that white man shit. Mm -hmm. So we was clean as a motherfucker. And I met a sister. She's the finest thing in the club. And how I got her was being nice now. Pulled up on her, asked for her phone number. She gave me the wrong phone number. We started talking the rest of the night, and she fell in love with me damn near. And she gave me the number. Well, she was so fine. She was so doggone fine. Until she had, I was like 24 at the time, and all the guys who was dealing with her was like 36, and she was something like 29 or 30. And she was so fucking fine. Until, I don't know, my spirit said, look, you know, you can hold on to this baby because I went to a party one night and two niggas was in there about to fight over her. One bought a TV and one bought a VCR. And I was in there, even had a fucking car. And they was about to fight and them motherfucker left with me. But what I used to do, and it was some, you know, she was like, oh, listen, I left with you tonight. So why don't you get up early in the morning and we go get some brunch? I said, I ain't getting up. Shit, I ain't going to goddamn place. Right. So I ain't, she said, we go get some brown. I said, fuck that. I ain't going no goddamn well. Yeah. She said, oh, I like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I like you. Mm -hmm. Because she is about like what I was saying about that white man being treated a certain way, that pretty woman. Mm -hmm. She hated the fact that these niggas was punks. Mm -hmm. She took their kindness for weakness. Mm -hmm. They had a party fighting over her because one bought a TV, bought her a TV for her birthday and one bought her a PCR. And she leave with the nigga that didn't buy her shit. Yeah, because you know my sister went. I bought a bag of famous Amos cookies. And you, boy, you were down. 
You know, my sister, when she was younger, you know, she used to come with all silly shit like, uh, you ever tell she would show up with a new nigga, I'd say, look at him for Oh, I like him for Oh, because he can fight. Some old shit like that. Because he can fight. I mean, they, they ain't no reason to be going with a nigga. Now, we got tons of women out here at a certain age can't find no damn men. Oh, no. No, it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not really good for the sisters. It, you know, it, it, it. but you know what? And I'm gonna say this: and some sisters ain't gonna like it, because I'm gonna tell the truth. Fuck it. <laughs> some of these women ain't worth having no damn man. And I will tell you why: they're not willing to compromise. They're not willing to change. You know, in other words, they have a preconceived notion mm -hmm. that a man supposed, and that's the word they need to take out the damn dictionary. Yeah, right. Supposed, because ain't nobody supposed to do shit. Yeah, right. But you got a lot of women out here that's not willing. To go the extra mile, but I'm saying is this. Now, you know, if you're dealing with somebody on a consistent basis sexually, mm -hmm. in order to keep it, to sustain it, you must remain open-minded. Yeah. And you must be willing <clears throat> to get, become creative. Ah, uh, that's true. Right. Okay. That's right. Now, we talked about this, and I'll say it for me. I love women with pretty feet. Yeah. I got a foot fetish. Yeah. I love women with pretty feet. Yeah. A woman with fucked up feet with three or four corns on one toe. All I can do is get, get her a stick of butter. All I, all I can do is her. Get her a stick of butter. You know, parquet. <laughs> but, a lot of these women don't understand, man, that you, 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 you know, you, you got brothers out here, you know, they, 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 I, I think a lot of times they forget the kind of stuff we go through in society as men. Because mm -hmm. you got to deal with the crack on the job, mm -hmm. but those that have jobs. Yeah. Then you got to deal with society as a whole, the way it views you as a whole. Mm -hmm. And the only real solace that a man got is this woman. Yeah. That's, that's all, really, when it boils down right. to it, that's all a black man got. Yeah, right. That's all he got is this yeah. woman. Right. So the last thing you, you don't need from a woman is one that's going to beat you down and one that want to prove to you how much they don't need you. Well, now, you know another thing, too? Now, you, you hit on something about being creative sexually. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you something. It's got to have some merit to it. Number one, I know a whole about the tantra thing, too. I've done a whole shit. I, I went into not only uh, from 2000, a whole another two, three years of study on it, but I had a whole year with goddamn damn near over 12 women mm, okay. to exercise that shit on. Okay. 12 women damn near at one time. Okay. Right. But I was honest. So you got to be honest. I told them straight up. Um, they're all the women. Right. So see, so it wasn't like I was playing a bunch of them. No, you, you, you the number one, and all of a sudden, no, I told them straight up. Look, I just got out of a seven-year relationship. I, there, I, there are other women. So they had to learn how to maneuver and deal, but I and deal with that. But I gave them the chance. Right. Nothing. But about the sexual aspect and stuff, I do know about the tantric thing, but I do know this particular part here that's just interesting. And one of the brothers, the brother R. Day Bay, made this one scenario. And I know it's got something to do with, with, with a sister having to pull up to the plate to be erotic. Now, I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about here. It's interesting if we're talking about some shit that's personal, you got to notice the society. They On Cinemax and the movie channel or whatever, they had these little sex thing shows that come on. They'd be soft porn. Right. But they have them on, they used to be on Friday nights on Cinemax. Over the years, they didn't make so many until every night at 10 o'clock. Mm, that's all you see. That's all you see. He made us an observation. He said they got all these sex shows and stuff, and it be some erotic stuff. And it's soft porn. They don't show no penetration, but they right. do everything else. He said, but if you notice, you never see no black shows on that cable. Mm -hmm. You don't see. Now, they got black people in hardcore pornography. Right. But they don't have black people in soft porn mm -hmm. or in love stories that much. Mm -hmm. We had one major love story to come out in the damn 1990s of black people, and that was the, uh, Love Jones. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's very few love stories that come out and stuff, romantic stories. Mm -hmm. But he said even the ones that you might think is pornography, soft porn, he said they make it clear 
that they don't show, because see, the regular porn out there, they're not allowed, you have to buy that stuff, or you have to go somewhere, but they're not allowed to show it on the general cable show. Right. They make it clear mm -hmm. that they never show black people engaged in passion. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that also makes you inhuman. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And stuff like that, and also doesn't teach, it, it also teaches you not to be erotic. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, your creativity starts to wane in these situations when you're with your mate. Now remember, I talked about how the energy is. Energy went between your mate, it waxes and, you, and it wanes. So we, we don't understand here either. Just like you have the moon that waxes and wanes, mm -hmm. you have cycles and stuff, you got a high tide, a low tide. Mm -hmm. In nature, and in sexual nature, because it's all connected, you have waxing and waning periods. So what happens a lot of times here is, if it starts to wane in the energy and it starts to repel, and you whip that person when it's repelling, it starts to burn up and you start going against the grain. So there's several things that happen in a certain situation, in a psychological situation and stuff like that, that you got to hear there's a science to us and how we deal with our mates and different things like that too. And as I'm talking about from an ancient model, there's a book, The Science of Love. And this is coming from, this guy John Baines got a book called Science of Love. And it's coming from the hermetic principles that come out of ancient Kemet. So there's science to stuff, you see what I'm saying, um, when it comes to um, relationships and all types of stuff and, all, uh, and relationships and different things like that. So there's a, there's a lot of things like that. Now, now I'm going to tell you another thing. Now this is one thing that a lot of females don't understand about a male. And if they can understand this, they can get on top of this. Now I'm talking from a male perspective to right. females. Right. To give them a goddamn secret. Right. Ever since I was in my early 20s, I would hear males and females utter this. And they utter this, and they make the mistake. They say, if he loved me, he wouldn't have done this or he wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking from a female perspective of what she wouldn't do or being in love. But a male is a different Entity. Mm -hmm. Now, love itself is a, a union of two opposites. That's the definition of it. Because if you got two halves of the same thing, you got still got a half. Right. It's only when you got an opposite. Right. That's why opposites attract. Right. So if she's in love with that person, she was in love with that person because he is something opposite. Mm -hmm. But not necessarily that chick. We're talking about where you lack an evil man or. or or something like that. You can be opposite in, in that whole thing about a, a mean nigga or something like that. Right. I'm not talking about that. Right. That's just derangement. But what I'm trying to say here is I'm this. Polarity. I'm talking polarity. Mm -hmm. And you say, now, you, yeah, if a woman loves like that, she would think the same way you're doing, but you're not in love with this woman. You're in love with a man. Mm -hmm. Now, I know this for a fact, and my mama told me this. She was a real unique woman. She would say shit that the average person in the, in, the, in the community wouldn't do. As a matter of fact, my mama was the type of person, it got so popular to people who used to go say, we don't know a certain thing, go ask Miss Glaceria. And people would come to my house and ask my mama questions. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that she was a genius. My mama, when you ask her a question, she say, if I don't know it, I'm going to find out. So that's research. That's what we don't do. Right. We accept shit. And we don't try to go after the answer. That's what we were talking about the whole time. Right. With her, if most of the time when you ask her if she know it, and she knew a lot, she would tell you. Right. But when she didn't, she'd go, oh, shit, let's find out. Mm -hmm. She'd go grab an encyclopedia. She'd say, I'm going to go to the library. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make some calls and do some stuff like that. Right. So now, she said it too. She said, now, you know, a man can be in love with a woman madly and can go out and sleep with other women. And still love you. He'll love you to death. You be on his mind. And that other woman that's just sex. She said, but I, I know a woman can be madly in love with a man. She won't go nowhere. She won't do nothing. Now, I know a sister. She was madly in love with a brother. And it was like this. So, as soon as they graduated high school, hell, he was already in the service before they, uh, three months before they even graduated. See, he's thinking on another level. I'm in love, but I got to do what I got to do. Whereas this sister here sat around and didn't go to school and didn't do nothing, waiting on this nigga. Mm -hmm. You see, 
The end result is he went off and got married some other place and stuff. It was because uh, you see what saying? He traveled. He, he, he is, traveled. Right, and he expanded, expanded his horizon. Right. She sat there and all this kind of thing here. Well, they think different. Now, let me show you what's happening here on this particular part about this. Because it's not about this running off. I have a friend named Glenn Pontu. This nigga was so in love with a woman. I have seen him get in the bed. And when shit go wrong, I've seen that nigga be sick in the bed. Psychologically. Because mm -hmm. some shit going wrong with him and his woman. Mm -hmm. Come I, right, I've seen that goddamn nigga. She, she had a car. We were early 20s. And she moved to the suburbs of Columbia, South Carolina. He was still in the city. And that nigga was so in love. That nigga got on a goddamn bicycle and tried to hit the fucking highway. And he realized he was about to kill himself when he got on that fucking interstate with that bicycle mm -hmm. going to see her. He was so much in love with her, but we could be hanging together. She could be in Alabama where she was from, and we could be hanging together. Or she could be someplace with her girl, and we could run up on two women, and he could have sex. I have seen them need to have sex. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With sisters. But yet this man was, man was so much in love. I've never seen a person that much in love with myself. And what I'm trying to say here is that we got to understand something. Men are different than women. Yes. So when we say, if he loved me, he would have done this, we got to understand you can't think the same way as a man because you are not a man. Right. Just like I can't think the same way as a woman on right. some things, some things I would never know. And never understand. And never understand. I said, I can't understand your ass. That's right. And they don't even try. And don't even try. So my point here is we must understand the differences is not necessarily a bad thing. Right, right, right. It is when you try to change somebody, you hear people up. Well, I tried to change that nigga. Well, see, the thing is, we know that's what we, we, we need to advocate. We need to learn how to harmonize yeah. our differences. Yeah, our differences. And celebrate, just like you asked in certain races, we need to come together and celebrate our differences. We got to do the same damn thing and understand that you're going to be different. Right. You're going to be different. Now, we're not talking about you suppressing you. You, you bend you to my will, what I'm trying to say. We're going to come together equal. You're going to realize that we are going to be different because we are, we are socialized a different way. Right. And, and, and you know, like I'm, I'm just, you know, there's one sister I'm, I'm trying to tell her, look, my spirit already done told me. Because, see, that's another thing, too. You just think because a person is alone. She told, this sister thought that because I didn't want a relationship with her, that I was going through problems. What she didn't realize was, in the spirit world and stuff like that, every human is not supposed to do what every human does. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that, that's not what creativity and stuff was. Now, I know my spirit told me at this particular time, this was a time period when you're supposed to deal with different women. You see what I'm saying? But you're not necessarily supposed to get into a relationship at this particular time. Now, I'm not saying that that wouldn't change. But this sister's thinking that because I didn't want to have a relationship with her exclusive. Right. That something was wrong with her. What was wrong with me. And I kept trying to tell her, look. And there was a reason why. She just got out of a 30-year marriage. Although she's in her early 40s. Ooh, bro. I'm like, God damn. All her life. All your fucking life. Don't you think the spirit wants you to experience something else? But she's so much of a fucking slave. Until they want her to experience me on a certain level so she learned independence on herself. Not just financial independence, but emotional independence and social independence outside of a man until she's so much of a slave until she's looking at me only as a person that can be the next nigga she just got out of a relationship with for 30 damn years. And I'm saying, in that case, why even in that relationship? Why do you think the spirit took you away from her? You might as well just call it a motherfucking life with the nigga you've been married for 30 years if it's meant for you to be together on that level right. when you're trying to look for me in the same damn thing. Right. Right. You see? So here it is and stuff like this and stuff, you know, but my point is she socialized a certain way and the spirit is trying to get her to look. Uh, there's certain things that set mold in your life that you've been doing things a certain way cause, and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, so on, on this particular aspect... You need to change your pattern around you and maybe your mind can change. See, that's what they do with black folks. They make sure that they make it hard for black folks to travel, not just outside of the country, but just travel in the United States. You know, a lot of, you know, it costs money because they know if a nigga got a fucked up mind, 
They want him to have the same environment all the time. He can keep the same fucked up blueprint. Mm. Even when he travels to another major city, they got a McDonald's here, they got a church's chicken here, they got a right. thing here, they got that, and it's called social engineering. You're in the same place at the same time. Same place. Wherever you go. You're in the same place. You're the same place. There you are. Mm. And so you keep the same mindset. So they don't so so a lot of times they don't get to see things outside of their own environment and they want to tailor it that way mm. so that they can keep the same mindset and keep the same slave. Mm. So a lot of times you notice a lot of people will get into certain situations and stuff and get bogged down. They don't leave the environment. And as a result, they keep the same mentality or the same mindset. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So on this particular thing, I was saying they was taking you, you had a certain mindset that you was going up and down, up and down for the last 30 doggone years and you was always getting into all this shit mm -hmm. and your life was miserable. And so they're taking you away from one situation so you can learn how to be another energy, uh, another person so it can produce another energy for you. Right. And here it is, you're trying to go back in the same damn situation <laughs> and they have sent you the brother that's trying to teach you right. to be free. Right. And you, and, and, and you insist on being afraid. Right. Miserable, but we're right. going to change it. I thought I said, hey, you should, be, you should be fucking me. You should be fucking another nigga. You should turn that shit around. Now, another, another sister, she got one boyfriend she's a guy in a relationship with. She got another boyfriend. She just got in, but he half ass and stuff like that, some stuff going on and stuff like that. And I'm saying, well, maybe they're trying to tell you, fuck with both of them and put both of them together make you one nigga. This is a form of science. So now, 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 now what you say, make a nigga sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my point here is, is my point here is, is we're going to learn some stuff. A lot of things are breaking uh, mental illness because this mental illness comes from slavery. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of things like that and all. And in order to break that and all, you're going to have to also change some forms of your lifestyle. Yeah. And a lot of people are complacent. They, they say people gravitate towards things that they're comfortable. Comfort at. They say that means when God comes from heaven to get you to come from, get you out of hell, you're going to go kicking and screaming. Because mm. a person would rather let their arm, they would rather, um, they would rather let, let their whole arm go green, gain green than to cut off the finger and save the whole hand. Too often, they don't want change, period, and so they have to cut the whole fucking arm off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Well, you, well, you know, the bottom line is, man, I just want to, uh, you know, I, I like to see if, you know, at least the men and the women come together on, on, on some front because, again, you know, we just fragmented to a point where, you know, I don't know, man, you know, it's like we, 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 we steady being divided. We steady, you know. And I think, I think also, too, we got to understand this, too. We got to permeate through and break through this thing. And when you see a man, when you see a female, they are the illness. You know, you got certain sisters or certain men, they're quick to judge a person because of the gender they're looking at other than the actual person. Because they're trained that that person is going to be a certain way just because he's a male. Or she's going to be that way just because she's a female. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. They got these preconceived notions to set in, and they don't even give time for you to even be something different that they're looking for because they're already done dog on. In the mind. In the mind. They've already got you set. And I say, since when did we become these enemies? Right. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Somebody's come in and say, no, a male isn't. Now I say, so don't say men are dogs. All, all men. All men are dogs. Yeah. All women are whores or something right. like that. Right, right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, hell, I don't know all. all men. And plus, we don't realize this about that. We we can't even say this no more about all black men are this way or all women this way. Because we got some black women and black men that's grown up in in Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, Wyoming. Wyoming. Everybody. North Dakota. Yeah, Connecticut. You see what I'm saying? New Mexico. And they don't even fit the mold of an inner city black person in Washington, D.C., or somebody in Atlanta. In, in Atlanta, somebody in Alabama. You got some ones that don't even, they, they're not, you know. So to say that all black men are what you call it is what you call, is, is this way. We got people in different geographical locations and different cultures. Mm -hmm. It's literally painting yourself into a box and not giving nothing, no chance. Yep, that's right. You see what I'm saying? That's right. So you can say, yeah, you can say that everybody on your block was a certain way, and that's, you can't really say that. 
Right. But you can come closer and say, you know, everybody in the same neighborhood got the same mindset. But you can't say that about a motherfucker in our thing. Well, you know what? No, really, based upon the, the only real thing you can say validly is your experience. Yeah. And that's limited. Based on the whole wide right, world. Right. And plus, this is another thing we also got to understand, too. We got to stick on another level. We live, North America is a continent. Okay. Right. That's what we don't realize sometimes. Right. This is a big country. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a continent. And they got Kurt Vonnegut, who wrote a lot of books. They had him on Nightline one day. Yeah, I'm sure. And he said, who the fuck even said that we even have a civilization in America? Mm -hmm. He said, America is a continent. He said, so civilization is not a national consciousness. He said it exists in pockets. We don't have a national nothing but what that white man want to put you under mind control with. But we live on a continent. That means you can't take everybody and sweep them in the same damn box. Outside of the general populace of mind control. But I'm talking about as far as what you call it and stuff. <clears throat> we live on a continent. It's bigger than what you think than to get mad as a person because you grew up only in Washington, D.C. Now you're speaking for every black person you done met. Mm -hmm. Niggas ain't shit. Right. You see what I'm saying? When you got people living in damn environments like Maine, I know some niggas live in Maine. Mm -hmm. They don't even fit the geographical and social environment that you were part of talking that shit. Right. Exactly. So here it is. We got to, first of all, we got to change the terrain to break out of the damn, what you call it? We off? Oh, no, we, 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 no, we still going. But look, let me hear something because we get ready to go off in about 15 minutes. I just want to cover this here. A lot of black people don't understand why we continue to stay on the bottom, why a lot of foreigners come in here and they seem to excel. Break down the difference between a citizen and a civilian. And where do we stand in those categories? Right. Okay. In the movie, Starship Troopers, they define what the citizen is and the civilian. Now, this movie is very important because the book was written in 1948. No, 1958. <clears throat> so the book was only given an indication on what America is like, and they decided to make a movie about it, because they always put it in a movie on what they're doing. So it's a movie, and they're talking about the difference between a citizen and a civilian. Mm -hmm. And so they made it clear that this particular continent, uh, this particular uh, uh, civilization that we call American civilization, wherever it might have been in the movie, it all sprung from, sprung from the same American civilization, that there were two, they would consist of two type of individuals. One is a citizen who have the inalienable right mm -hmm. of what the citizen has in this country. The other one is a civilian who can never be a citizen, but has to, it can have a native rights. And they said, well, what is it? They said, well, a citizen has to have things given to it. That means it can always be taken away. Not, not a civilian. Right, civilian. It can always have to have things given to it. That means it can always be taken away. A privilege. A privilege. Whereas a, whereas a, uh, a citizen has inalienable rights. Now, what does that mean when it comes to black people? Because that's who they was addressing. Right. We are civilians of the United States government because there was never any congressional act to make us citizens. Mm -hmm. People got to understand history. They freed the slaves in the Emancipation Proclamation. That was freeing us from chattel slavery. It did not make us a citizen. Mm -hmm. Just like there was never any ceremony or any congressional act to uh, ratify uh, the uh, Federal Reserve and the taxes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And income tax. So, there was never a congressional act to make us citizens. No induction. No induction. Now, you might say that the government don't work that way. Well, you a damn fool. Because mm -hmm. the government is very technical on when it comes to their laws. Mm -hmm. They don't deviate. And they have over 3 million laws in the Library of Congress. Check that out. Three million laws mm -hmm. in the Library of Congress. There you go. 
Yeah. So my point here, don't let nobody fool you. Um, they didn't forget. If if you're not a citizen, you're simply not a citizen. Now, so we know that there's no thing like that. So that puts you under the guise of being a civilian. So they go, no, no, Bobby, now come on now. I get to vote. I get to do everything that a citizen gets to vote. Do I get to do? I get my income tax. I get my I get my social security. I get my retirement. I get everything a citizen. Yes, you do. And at this particular time, you can always argue as a citizen because of one thing. The civilian is given a privilege. There's a difference. So yes, you can go and be in the process of what a citizen does because you have been given a privilege. But the difference between a citizen and it is his inalienable right, your privilege can always be revoked. And in so many cases, they'll revoke your citizenship. And even with, 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 with the Vote Rights Act, uh, say, 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 say we're the only group that can have an act, an act right now. We are a citizen. And so they have to give us a Voting Rights Act as a privilege. Right. Now, this is what's going down now that is showing that Bill Clinton did because he's one of the worst presidents we had. Why is that? Because, number one, he's that way, but the simple fact is we don't understand there's no such thing as no two-party system. Mm -hmm. When they put a certain person in there, it's to let, let a certain person go to sleep. And it's not as if that he runs the country. So when they put him in there, it's because they want to get a certain amount of black people to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. And so, therefore, they will put him in there, but the one that puts you to sleep is the more severe one. Because that means he's going to enact certain laws and certain legislation against you that you got to be asleep to do it. So he can give a few niggas a job. But when the dust clear, he's taking away most of your rights. Don't you know that most of the majority of the things that we that we have earned that we earned with so called affirmative action was a, repealed and abolished under the Clinton administration. And I was told that more black men went to prison than the Clinton administration. That, exactly. Now, check this out. He, Bill Clinton, put into law with the welfare bill. The first thing they did is they took the welfare case, and I'll explain what that is in a minute, and put it in the hands of the child support laws. So the people who supports, who enforces child support, the people who enforce child support now will be able to handle welfare laws. So that is your policing, because they got a child support policing that they have put together in the last damn 12 or 13 years. They put together this, this strong laws, police laws, to lock people up based on child support. So the first thing they did is they inducted the welfare into that, put it in the same thing, because they mean that they were getting ready to do something with welfare. So the first thing they did is he signed this over and made it so that the black man would have to pay back welfare. So right here is showing you where privilege can be revoked. Now what I mean by that. Welfare is supposed to be an aid or an assistance. Right. That for a citizen can get as in his inalienable right, right. And don't have to pay it back. Right. But because we are not citizens, <laughs> he made it a law that we have to pay back welfare, and the white man don't have to pay back welfare, although there were more white people on welfare than it was black. So, so, so you saying it was a loan? They, con they made it into what was an aid under our privilege at the time, because we right. didn't have to pay it back in the 70s or the 80s or most of the 90s. Never. What used to be an aid under when we were given the privilege, when they revoked that privilege, it became a loan. <laughs> so we are under the same aspect as... Uh, Philippines and Jamaica, whoever these third world countries that borrowed this money, right, right, are the first world countries that borrowed this money from from from, from the United States, and they got to pay it back because they are uh, because they, number one, they are not a part of the United States, so therefore it is a loan. Which one thing good comes out of it? It's telling you that you are sovereign as a black person because you're not a citizen. Mm -hmm. But you got to pay it back under the same loan system as a Philippines or somebody else who borrows money. You see what I'm saying and all? Because you're not a citizen. You're under that particular aspect of it. 
And so therefore, the white man don't have to pay it back. And as a result, Clinton signed this in and they got black men all over the country now. They're gearing up. And so, they, and because they put it under the child support law, they get to go to jail when they don't pay the shit back. And you are somewhat of a terrorist. Because you are a sovereign country. And by you not paying it back, by not being a citizen, that is an act against the United States. So they have let you go and they have made you a terrorist and you are now officially don't have the rights of the citizen on some things because they can start revoking those privileges. So the difference here is you have a privilege for them to do things, but that privilege can be revoked. And in this case, they're showing this with the welfare. The black man got to pay back the welfare law. And they got to share your check. You can't get no loans. You can't get a house. You can't get things because you are default with the United States government until you pay that particular thing back and you can go to jail. Whereas the white man who is a citizen don't have to pay it back. And not only that, they're showing you that it's not just the black man. Down in South Carolina, they got the black woman paying the shit back. Hmm. It depends on what state you in, whether they enforce it with the male or the female. In this particular case, in South Carolina, they can't track some of the males. They've been long gone, so therefore, they don't even know whether the fathers or whatever, because they didn't get into that. So now they're letting the dog on female. Yeah, it's amazing you pay it back. You say that because the foreigners, like the Koreans and the Spaniards, be on welfare, and the man's still being out. That be in the house and not only that too. Because they, uh, the foreigners, have the right to, when they become a citizen, they are sworn in, sworn in as a citizen. And because they are inducted, they get the inalienable rights as a citizen because they are true citizens. I'm very white. Right. Compared. And so my mother in the 1950s, we didn't realize at this particular time, but the, they, what they were thinking was racism was the United States government enacting a basic right, and that was this. My mother was in college in the 1950s, and she couldn't go in certain restaurants, but certain Africans could come and get out of a limousine wearing African garb and speak in African and could go in the same restaurants in the Deep South. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In the Deep South. So we are not only just not citizens, but we are civilians, but we are what you call property, are subjects of the United States government. Right. You see. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Bobby, we got about five minutes, man. What do you think we as a people? What we, 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 we at? What, 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 what can we do? I mean, in the five, well, minutes, five minutes' time, what, 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 if, from, from your vantage point, uh -huh. being a mentally ill people that we are, mm -hmm. are we just going to go fucking crazy and say, fuck it? Or is there, do we have some recourse? Our recourse resides in two levels. The spiritual and the existing knowledge. When you just get knowledge of something, it makes you a better person. It makes you a person that can maneuver. Even on the physical, if you've got a certain amount of knowledge. So I know some people say, well, the spiritual, that's another thing, and i got to train myself, and i got to do that. But... There is another way you can do things in the warfare, even physically. It's to gain knowledge of something. Once you have a knowledge of something, even physically, you can maneuver better than a motherfucker who's ignorant. So one of the things is not to turn against knowledge. And once you get into that knowledge, you're going to find out that overall, there's a spiritual aspect. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about manipulating the forces of the universe as the ancient African used to do. There's a spiritual aspect for those particular people that is not on that particular level. You still got to have knowledge of the government that you live in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we got to start somewhere. For the ones who have got that knowledge of the government, your next step is to go into something spiritual to balance out you're maneuvering when you're dealing with them on their laws. Because this is warfare. It's warfare. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand, our warfare is spiritual. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It goes along with the physical. But those particular people is just finding out. you got to get some knowledge, period, of how things are. In that particular case, you must try to learn as much as you can 
and look behind things. Do not accept the apparent. Make it your business to not accept the apparent, especially on what that comes on that damn TV. Question everything. Question everything. They control the print. They control the media. And it is not in their best interest to give their slaves the truth through their mass media. But once you have a, 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 a conscious mind, you can look on the mass media and they always give the truth right for the people. And they talk to two people in this country, the ones that know and the ones that don't know. Unfortunately, the majority of the people don't know, and there's even greater majority of our people that don't know. But once your eyes are open, they will actually come on the damn TV set and tell you. Mm -hmm. They put it out in movies. They'll, they'll tell you something on the news one day and come back the next day and tell you something else. And they were saying a thinking person would put this together. You're saying, well, why would they do that? They want to have everybody conspiracy in a conspiracy. Because these are rich people that rule the world and they get bored sometimes. Well, you know what? what, what? They like to monitor to see where your mind is. Well, you know what? And... and, 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 and in conclusion, you know, Bob, I've come to realize that this whole thing that we're experiencing ain't no but a fucking game. It's all a game. And you got to know how to play it. It's role playing. You got to know it. it's a game and know how to play. Bobby Hemmett, thank you very much. Yeah. We got, you know, and, and the TJ, it's good we talk about this in the, in the city of Washington, D.C., because this is the home of the same conspiracies that grip our life. Yes, this, yeah, this is, man. This, this is the seat of the government. Yeah. And it's still Chocolate City, you know. We got some. We got That's some, right. We got, it's we, very spiritual too, because those motifs that they use to run this government are still African symbols. Mm -hmm. That big obelisk and all that. And I know for a fact, since I've been here, this time to speak, I haven't spoken here ten years. Since I've been here, there's been some stuff happening to me spiritually. Mm -hmm. So I know that this was a spiritual journey. Yeah, it, it, but, including the fucking toilet. That's right. That's right. Because <laughs> I ain't never had problems with my toilet. <laughs> Until you saw that bitch. No, I didn't even guess what I didn't use. I just pissed in it and the motherfucker stopped up. Oh, well, and on that case, <laughs> again, Bobby, thank you, man. It's been real good, brother. All right. Peace. Peace.